Hiya, I'm Simone Radley from England and Nails and in this video I am going to be applying acrylic to some bitten nails. So I've got the lovely Katie with me and she has abused her nails, we won't lie. Um, so I've already fitted one form and one tip to her nails. Slightly odd but in another video you can see how to apply forms and tips to bitten nails. And Joanna will put the link for you. So now we're going to apply our acrylic. I'm going to work in one colour and I'm going to use Sydney acrylic. It's a really nice cover pink and it's probably my favourite to be honest. I like it because it's nude but it's quite pink. So this is what I'm going to use and I am using my A10 acrylic brush and Mrs Monomer is my fave. So I've done all the nail prep and everything as well also in another video that you can watch. So we are ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to do like a bit of a squoval shape on Katie's nails just because I find when they are so short, let me get something to point with, when they're so short if you do like a little sad kind of almond or if you do a really little oval shape and um, they kind of look a bit odd whereas if you do a square or a scroval you're really going to build out right from these corner points and build this nail out so it gives that illusion of being um, a bit wider and it makes it more like a normal nail sorry <laughs> because it builds it straight out from these corner points which have gone all the way up here so that's why we're going to do a scroval so I'm going to work on the one with the form on first I'm just going to put my prime bond on. I like the prime bond pen. I find it so easy to use. And now we're ready to go. So when I'm working on bit of nails, I only do one form at a time so that they've not gone where you don't want them to go. And I really pinch the pad of a finger underneath to keep that form where I want it. And we're ready. So I'm picking up quite a large bead to start with and the thing with working on forms with really bit of nails is it can be really difficult to know what length you're doing because obviously you can't see through these forms you don't know how long you're doing the nail because her actual nail is so high up and you've got this bulb of skin at the end you can build something out that you think is really long and then when you take the form off you've not even got to the end of the finger because the nail's so far up. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, that makes sense. So basically you need to overestimate. So I always think it's better on a really bit of nail to overestimate the length and do it that bit longer than have to sort of file it down rather than do it shorter and you take the form off and you're like oh I've not even got over the end of the blooming finger do you know what I mean so we'll do it a bit we'll do it a bit longer than than probably what we want and then we can chop you so my first bead I have built out my free edge length and shape and now I'm going to do two more beads and it'll be done. So now I've just got to put my cuticle bead in. I have only got a really little gap because we're working on such a little nail now. I know I keep saying it. I feel dead bad keep saying it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that'll be our last bead to go in. Then I'm just turning it to the side. I always look from every angle when I'm doing my nails. I always make sure to look from every angle to make sure it looks how I want it. And I can see, I don't know if it will come across very well on the camera. But I can see here I've got a bit of a dip. So I'm just going to add a little bit more in. So these nails, they definitely need a good pinch if we just left it like that it'd be a bit wide and a bit fat and a bit flat so I'm gonna pinch it and that sounds about right you need to knock your acrylic with something hard if it sounds like a really low thud 
then you are too soon and you'll pinch it and you'll just squidge it. If it's really high, sort of, I don't know how you describe it. How would you describe the high tap when it's set? It sounds really like you're banging something really hard. Then you've missed it, basically. And it's solid as a rock and you've got no hope. Two hopes, Bob hope and no hope <laughs> with that one. So you need to get it. See? That's loud, isn't it? Yeah. Then we're at the point where it's basically set. So you need to get it when it's not a really low dull thud when you can hardly hear it, but before you get to that stage. Somewhere in the middle. But I always test it. So if it's a bit dull and you're not too sure, test it quickly a little bit and take it off. And then you can see, if you're starting to squidge it there, hold your horses, you're too soon and you're going to... You're going to knacker it up. So you just wait a little second. <laughs> but yes, when I'm working on bit of nails, I like to do one, pinch one, and then move on. Otherwise, I end up missing it. So I'm going to take this form off. And now we're going to do the one that's got a tip on. So it's basically just the same as how you would normally proceed with your acrylic but you can see I think you can appreciate here just to get her tip on how short how high up her natural nail is so with this on you can really see where the pad of a finger comes and how much longer you kind of have to do the nail to get over the pad of a finger so tips in one way could be easier on a bit of nail because obviously you'll cut the length of the tip down so you can see exactly where they're coming to so you've not got this sort of worry that you might not build your nail out long enough because you can see where you're going with your first bead i have built out my free edge and covered my tip just as i would normally do now i'm going to come in with the second bead and this is just to build up our apex here it's not a massive bead and it's pretty much going to focus in the middle and then I've just got my last bead to do right up at the cuticle because they are so short you could do it in two beads if you wanted you could even do it in one bead if you wanted but I still like to do it in three beads um, I just prefer it but Whatever works for you. I'm looking from the side to make sure there's no dips. There is a little bit of a dip, so I'm just going to add a little bit more acrylic in here. And now I can show you the pinching one more time, just so you can see what I'm on about. So obviously it's looking quite wide. And if you tap it there, you can't really hear anything. Now we're starting to hear something. So now I would test it too soon because I could feel it was sticky and it was really bending like it was going to squash. It's getting louder. So we'll test it again. Still a little bit sticky on the edge. Test it again. Still a little bit sticky on the edge because if you tap it on the edge there's not much of a tap. Now I think it's right so I'm just going to pinch it for a few seconds it doesn't need to be long. And now it will be totally set and you can hear it's really loud and like, high pitch. And it's made it a nice, nice and narrow. So that is it. That is how I apply my acrylic to bitter nails. So I hope you have found this video useful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. That's a like though, isn't it? You know, do all the things. And ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new videos. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.